And uh, September, I think it was September 2013, we had a topic where we talked about Heidi Klum saving her children's hair, their biracial, and saving it in a plastic bag. And I made some statements that were not only wrong, they, they hurt uh, our community. And when I say our community, black people are very sensitive about a discussion about our hair. And I probably confused a lot of white folk, too, <laughs> with the discussion. And but Chinese. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's right. Who don't know hair? It, if y'all don't know hair. <laughs> and, and in my comments, and, and trying to explain, but it was juxtaposed against statements that were very, very hurtful, and to come out of the mouth of a, of a, a very proud black woman, uh, I, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take the time to apologize, especially in the form that this discussion occurred mm. because there was a lot of backlash and a lot of people uh, said that I was uh, 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 a uh, Uncle Tom and that I was a... Um, that you were self-hating. Yes, yeah. and that I was a HN and I was a... Um, there were words that were used. I was a coon. I was all kinds of different things. Um, and, and I could understand that kind of uh, uh, language being used because people were hurt. They were hurt that I had the platform, and I'm going to say it, on the number one network, and that I made a big mistake on the number one network. Now, you, Cheryl, actually um, gave me a copy of your apology, and you've asked me to read a portion of it before you explain to everyone the full story. So let me just read this on behalf of the number one network and Cheryl Underwood. <laughs> now, this, is, this, this comes from Cheryl. Um, you said, quote, I want to apologize for my recent attempt at humor that missed the target and hit my people squarely in the heart. To all of you who say I'm very, to all of you, I say I'm very sorry for my failed attempt at humor surrounding something that's very sensitive to us, our hair. I could use this time to try to explain the intent of what I said but misunderstanding aside, the way the joke came out offended my people and my community, which was not my intent. And Julie, I will say this too. I, it, there is a responsibility to being on TV. Mm -hmm. And there's a cultural responsibility when you make a mistake that really hurts people. The way we got images out there, there's, there's no need for me to do something that causes more damage to us. And that's why I wanted this to be my reveal. But I also wanted to go on a, a journey, not just of self-discovery, but w what was I really feeling? Mm -hmm. So um, I took a year, I cut my hair off, cut the perm off, cut, the, you know, I still wear wigs because I like variety. And, and you will see me wear a variety of, of different hair on this show. Because I like variety. What I really wanted to do was engage women in this business. Sherry Shepard reached out to me. Uh, Yvette Nicole Brown, who's on The Odd Couple, reached out to me. Uh, I got a chance to talk to and do an interview with a, with a very influential blogger, Curly Nikki. But there was one woman that I met, and her name is Denise Mosley, and she does an organization called Girl Power. She didn't know me, and I didn't know her. And in this firestorm, she sent me a phone number, and she said, let's talk so I could talk about my feelings and show how we can make amends. I think that if you hide behind something, then you are a coward. And I wanted to show that I was strong enough to take the truth about what people were saying and on this network and in this chair say, I am so sorry to my community and my people for hurting you. And I'm asking you for forgiveness, and I will work hard to make it. And I'm going to wear my hair like this for the rest of the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wake Up Report. And a black woman reveals her natural hair to the rest of the world, and the world does not come to an end. Cheryl Underwood on the uh, season premiere of The Talk got a little personal with uh, the audience both uh, in the studio and I guess uh, around the country in regards to some remarks that she made two years ago in 2013 so apparently this has been uh, bugging her for some time or she's been paying for it 
for two years and uh, wanted to address it again. But two years ago on the talk, uh, Heidi Klum was on the uh, show and I don't know, the subject got around to her kids or something like that. And she was talking about her kids' hair and um, how she thinks her kids' hair is beautiful and when they get a haircut, she saves the hair in a bag or something like that. And uh, Miss Underwood's uh, response to uh, 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 Heidi Klum's kids' hair in reference to black hair in general was uh, something that did not pan out to be very funny. So let's uh, let's take a quick look at the um, comment that got her in so much trouble. Project Runway host Heidi Klum says she saves all kinds of keepsakes from her children with her ex-husband's seal, even their son's hair. In a recent interview, Heidi said, quote, they have big afros, and when I shave them all down, I keep all the hair and put it in a Ziploc bag. I keep everything. <laughs> what unusual things do we all save? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> <laughs> Why would you save afro hair? I mean, you can't weave in afro hair. You can't... You don't never see us at the, at the hair place going, look here, what I need is... <laughs> I need this curly nappy beard. <laughs> that, just, that just seems but nasty. I totally get this. I mean, I don't know if I'm weird, but I have like my son's first haircut and hair little Which things. Which is probably some beautiful long silky stuff. <laughs> Me too. That's not, that's not what an afro is. So, uh, I mean, after that, I guess the uh, uh, the downslide of uh, uh, Miss Underwood started. And uh, she did apologize initially. I, I guess it was like some kind of just a, a halfway uh, apology to kind of brush it off. But the um, backlash uh, continued, did not stop. And uh, and I guess, too, at the same time, it gave uh, uh, Miss Underwood a chance to uh, kind of do some retrospect about what she said about uh, her particular positioning uh, regarding what she said, because here you are calling black hair nasty and degrading and ugh and you know all the things you were doing all the while you're wearing this this uh wig or weave or whatever it was uh in your hair so uh i guess with this uh season's uh, show she wanted to take the time to apologize yet again to um everyone uh, i guess black people in particular and um you know she she gave the uh, uh apology regarding her remarks and how her remarks hurt people and how her remarks were insensitive and how as a black person she should have um, showed more um, either restraint or judgment, uh, you know, in, uh, in making those remarks. So uh, now if you ask me, I would say she looks better with her natural hair than she did with that, with that wig on her hair, with that weave on her hair or whatever. And you know, my thing about this is that, I, you know, and, and listen, if it was a learning, because it obviously was a learning experience for uh, Cheryl Underwood, I think that the fact that, you know, the, she got all that heat put on her really gave her a chance to uh, uh, focus and think about what she said. I believe it is um, Viola Davis, the same thing. You know, she started wearing her uh, hair in, in more naturally, uh, well, more naturally, just started wearing her natural hair. Uh, and she kind of explained too that wearing all these weaves and wearing all these wigs and wearing all this stuff to try to conform to someone else's standard of beauty, it just wasn't worth it. And um, and and she's a beautiful woman. She looks even more beautiful with her natural hair. Miss Underwood looks more beautiful with her natural hair. And I would hope that all the black women who, uh, or if you saw this, you know, and if you haven't seen it, find it on YouTube or find a copy of it. Just maybe it's the first step in uh, a series of steps that uh, she's taking and that a lot of other black women can take in learning to love yourself, learning to love what you look like, learning to love to appreciate what you have as opposed to conforming to someone else's standard of beauty. Now, Pick, pick some supermodel or some celebrity. So just to say white girls in general, okay? White girl's hair is white girl's hair. That is what is special and unique about white girls. So their hair is beautiful on them. I don't need to see white girl's hair transplanted onto a black girl's head. Makes absolutely no sense. It's not going to work for the black girl. 
I, you've heard me. I, I, it was a while back I talked. And I was talking about, I don't know how, we, I don't know what I was talking about, but Puerto Rican women, when Puerto Rican women take their hair and they braid it back into those four or five real thick braids, and then they put that Puerto Rican bandana, they tie it around, around that, that, ooh, that does something to me. You know, that to me is just sexy and it is just, but it is, it is Puerto Rican women. I don't want to see that on anybody else. That is something that is unique uh, with Puerto Rican women, the texture of their hair, the color of their hair, how their hair looks. I want to see it on Puerto Rican women. I don't want to see it on black women. With black women, there's these, um, I call them just the nappy afros. It's the big afros and they just look like woolly and nappy. And, and that, to me, you just want to grab it and just grab it and hold on to it, you know, because it's just sexy. That is what is special and unique about black women's hair. Okay, now, and with, for black women, black women have the ability to pretty much do anything they want to do with their hair. If they want to wear it straight, they can wear it straight. If they want to wear it braided, they can wear it braided. If they want to curl it, it is the most versatile hair that any woman has on this planet. However, because black women are under such pressure through whatever media they have grown up looking at, through whatever pressures that they have come up with, come through, you know, as uh, young girls, particularly with other black people. We talk about each other probably worse than other people talk about us. But when you grow up, you know, nappy hair, kinky hair, ugly hair, all this kind of stuff, well, you're going to do whatever it is you want to do to try to conform your hair to something that you think the uh, 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 mainstream popular culture likes. So all this uh, hair weaves and 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 uh, straightening gels and perms, all that mess that rots your hair out, that uh, rots your scalp out, that eventually makes your hair fall out of your head, that all of the things, all the negatives that these things bring about when all you have to do is simply embrace what God gave you. Appreciate what God gave you. Work with what God gave you. And when that inner beauty comes out, I would say, if you even look at uh, the, the the pictures of Miss Underwood now versus the ones previously on the talk, when she was wearing that wig, she looks more beautiful now than she's ever looked since she's been on the show, in my opinion. But that's because now she's herself. Black women, if you take care of your hair, if you don't tie it up with all them weaves, if you don't lather all that perm and all that lye and acid and all that crap on your hair, then your hair will grow your hair will be just as full and beautiful and long if you want it to be like that. The same way white girls and Latina girls and Asian girls and Indian girls and all of that, all those women are. Learn to appreciate yourself and learn to work with what you have. Other people will appreciate that as well. And when they see that you love yourself, because that's what it's about. It's not about the world accepting you. It's about you loving yourself. Once you love yourself and accept yourself for who you are, accept you for who you are, there ain't nobody that can do anything to get through that piece of armor that you put on. Lapita, uh, Lapita, one of the most beautiful women, just beautiful chocolate girl uh, that you could ever see. Uh, she gave a, a ex award acceptance. As beautiful as this woman is, outline how when she was a kid, she felt like she was ugly because of her, her dark skin, because of her hair, and that's how society made her feel. Get over it, because I don't care how much of that you can peel off. I don't care how many straighteners you 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 uh, put on your hair. If you don't like yourself for who you are, there ain't no amount of cosmetic surgery, no amount of plastic surgery, no amount of hair weaves that's going to change that. Learn to love yourself and learn to make other people conform to your standard of beauty as opposed to the other way around. This is KTM and the Wake Up Report saying think a little bit. It will do wonders for you.